Good afternoon, More Medic One. Today we have a little Troy built generator on the bench. Uh, the complaint is that it's not putting out power. Um, basically, we're going to run through the diagnosis process or the diagnostic process. If you're not getting anything out of your receptacles, uh, I've got a load bank here. Uh, how, well, basically, what you want to do, this is what I do. <clears throat> You got a set of brushes. Sometimes this will work on this style of generator that has an automatic voltage regulator called an AVR. Uh, a lot of times that will go bad and that will cause it not to have power. Uh, your AVR sends 24 volts DC to your brushes. Uh, if you introduce <clears throat> if you introduce 12 volts DC to your brushes from a battery source here that should uh, once you hook it up I'm gonna get this thing cranked up and if you put half as much voltage as the AVR puts out to your brushes you're only gonna get about 50 volts on your meter so let's get it cranked up and uh, we'll see how it runs your positive wire always towards the bearing Let's hook this up to 12 volts. As you can see, we're putting about 50 to 60 volts. Now you can turn this on and pull a load on it, but you're not going to be pulling full load, but just half load. Drop down to 60 volts. Since you don't have an AVR hooked up, you're just running raw voltage to the generator. You don't want to do this for a very long time. Uh, your frequency or your hertz are about 62, which is normal. Go ahead and kill the that. I'm going to unplug the uh, my 12 volts to the brushes. What I just did was verify that my automatic voltage regulator is not sending voltage to my rotor. So we're going to replace the uh, AVR on this one and it should fix it up. Well, I got my little AVR in today. Got the generator back on the bench. Took a little while to get it, a couple, three days. But here's the new AVR. And basically, you just kind of if you want to, you can just take a picture of the old one, and but it's marked. The wires are marked. Actually, has a, I know you can't see it, but it's got like six stamped on the wire right here, and it's going to have six marked on your AVR, so you can't get the wiring messed up. If you do, I don't know what would happen if you crossed it. It might blow it. I've never hooked them up backwards, so I don't want to find out. But uh, let's get the new one on there and get it cranked up and see how it does. I've got my generator cranked up. I've got the AVR installed. I'm running 240 volts where I need to be. Right at 60 hertz. Now the receptacle says this thing will hold a 30 amp load, but I don't believe that. When I put it on, when I pull a 20 amp load on it, it loads it pretty heavy. Matter of fact, it's pulling 29, 29 amps right there. Let me pull uh, 15. The reason that these AVRs go out is people overload the generator, and that's not considered a warranty. 10 amps. About 29. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna overload this generator just for a second so I can show you what happens. It just falls on its face. You don't want that. But anyway, let's get this thing shut down.
So let's just recap of what I did. Uh, basically, I disconnected the old AVR. Uh, there's exciter windings inside the, uh, the the stator or the yeah the stator that uh, that feeds the AVR the DC voltage that it needs to produce the voltage to induce 24 volts into the uh, the rotor. Uh, if the AVR if the AVR is not producing the voltage, it's not going to produce electricity because the exciter windings aren't telling the rotor or the stator, uh, yeah, the rotor to uh, to to gen in, you know electricity. Uh, you got to have 24 volts. So if you go back and you put 12 volts from a battery into the brushes direct, you should get about 50 volts out of your uh, receptacles, 50 to 60 volts. If you do that, and you don't, if you don't get 50 to 60 volts, you may have a problem somewhere else inside your stator or your rotor. Uh, these little Chinese generators like this, I don't have any service manuals on it, so I don't know the values, uh, ohm readings and stuff on these, uh, on these, you know, the stator or the rotor or anything like that. So I just have to basically diagnose them the best I can. Um, you start throwing parts at these generators, people, it gets very expensive. Uh, I replaced one part. I replaced the part that I diagnosed. But uh, if you have any questions about generators or Briggs & Stratton engines that power these little generators, uh, this thing happens to be a 6,000-watt uh, Troy built uh, made by Briggs & Stratton Power Products. It's not really a Troy built. It's actually a Briggs & Stratton uh, little Chinese job. But uh, like I said, if you have any questions, just let me know. Rate comment and subscribe. Y'all have a good day. Thanks.